Hello everyone, welcome to Native Mobile Vets. In today's video, we are going to cover factory design pattern. This is also one of the commonly asked interview question. Either it can be asked to you in your Android interview question or if you are just going for any software development role, design patterns are very important. So as I already mentioned in our community post, we are going to cover this video in a specific format. First, we are going to learn about factory design pattern, what it is, why we need it. Then we are also going to implement it using Kotlin. Okay, so let's start today's video. Okay, so the first question will be that what is the need or what actually is a factory design pattern? Now let me give you an example because examples will help you to understand it better. Right, so let's consider one example where you have one chocolate making factory. This factory is responsible to build different different kinds of chocolate. It can be a white chocolate, a milk chocolate or a dark chocolate. Right? Now you want to streamline this process of chocolate making. Now you want to make sure that your factory has an efficient production process. You want to streamline the process of chocolate making. That time you can introduce this factory design pattern. Basically this factory design pattern, this will be a set of instructions which will ensure that your factory produces the chocolates in an efficient way. So you will not be making any chocolate by your own hand. You will be having some specific set of machines which will build your chocolates in an efficient manner. So with the help of factory design pattern, your factory process will be streamlined. So once you implement this process, your production will be so efficient that if some customer comes and they place an order that we need 100 dark chocolate. So your factory will be having some specific department or some specific machinery which will be producing these chocolates. Customer will not be aware how they are producing it. Customer just placed an order that I need 100 dark chocolate. And your factory will produce those chocolates and your factory will return one order of 100 dark chocolate to that customer. So here you are understanding the process. It's a factory approach where customer is placing one order, factory is doing its job separately, factory is producing the chocolates. Customer just place an order and then customer got the result, customer got that order, right? So the factory design pattern is basically one abstraction, right? So it will just produce some kind of abstract contracts which any software component can use and they can demand any kind of object. They will not be knowing how this object is constructed, but they will receive that object. Okay. So first of all, this is a creational pattern. It is used to create some kind of object. It is used to create some kind of piece of software which any other component can use. Then the next point is it encapsulate object creation. So as I mentioned, if someone is requiring some object, so they will just tell that I need this object. They will not be knowing that how our factory pattern is creating that object. Our factory pattern will create that object separately and it will just return one final object to the required component okay then another part is the client code is not knowing that where or how factory is constructing the object client is just requesting an object and getting it right client does not know about the implementation part of it so in simple terms there will be one interface which will be having some kind of contracts or method abstract methods which client will access and those interface will be implemented somewhere else Right, so the implementation part will be completely away from the client. Okay, let's see this in one box diagram. So this is how it works. So we have some piece of client code, right, or some client application. And then we have one factory interface and this interface will be having some kind of methods and these methods will be returning some kind of object. Okay, so client code will request, client code will just call one interface, that function, okay, which is there in this interface and when client calls some kind of function which is inside this interface, so this interface will return some kind of object to our client, okay. And the object creation implementation, like how the object is being created, this is separate, 
client does not know anything about it and this factory interface is just having one abstract function which client is calling and getting some kind of object but this object is getting created somewhere else so this is how it works so we have one factory class which is kind of an interface which is having some abstract methods and then we have one concrete class which is implementing this interface and implementing the implementation for all of these methods let me show you this in one code example this is one client let's say our application or from where we are calling these methods to create some kind of object so from our client we will be calling some kind of function create vehicle right so let's say we need some kind of vehicle we are passing one parameter and this parameter is basically a number of wheels right so we are just passing it to here okay so this function create vehicle is inside our factory class which is an interface okay so this factory class is having one abstract function create vehicle it is taking one parameter wheels and it is returning one vehicle object so client is just calling this function create vehicle and client is getting one vehicle object client does not know that how client is getting this vehicle object because implementation is not here at the factory class right we have one concrete class which is implementing this function okay so this function implementation is in inside concrete class and here we can see that we have one implementation that based on the parameter like if wheel is 2 so this concrete class is creating an object of bike and if wheel are 4 so it's creating one car okay and returning one vehicle object so basically client is just dealing with factory class but there is one concrete class as well which is responsible to actually implement the object construction part right so factory class is just having abstract method client is just dealing with these abstract method client does not know how the implementation is happening and we have our implementation inside the concrete class okay so that's how a factory design pattern works let's start the implementation part of it so for the implementation part of it let's create one file one kotlin file and we'll call it factory method design pattern and in this file we can basically create all of the component of our factory design pattern for this example in this example we are going to create one uh, factory which is responsible to create different types of vehicles right so if we want a bike if we want a car or truck or different kind of vehicles this vehicle factory will be responsible which will provide us all of those products okay so first of all we need basically the default vehicle interface which will be uh, used to create different kind of vehicles right so first we need to define one interface for our vehicles so let's call it vehicle interface this is basically to produce some kind of vehicles okay so we are going to define one interface vehicle and inside this let's say for now we just have one characteristic for each vehicle which will be drive and this will return some kind of a string okay so all of the vehicles will be having one function drive okay now let's define some classes which implement this vehicle interface and represent some kind of vehicle so those classes will be like bike class and we will call these classes as concrete class okay and we can define it like class bike and it will implement this vehicle interface okay and the moment we implement it we need to override this function drive and we can return some kind of message here let's say bike is on the road okay and we can define one another concrete class let's say car this is also one concrete class or basically these are the concrete products basically so this is one actual representation of a class for the actual concrete product okay we can define class car this will also implement vehicle interface and this will also override drive function we can return here as well car is on the road 
All right. So we have an interface for product types. We have two concrete classes, concrete products, which are representing this interface type. Okay. Okay. Now we need to define one vehicle factory. And first we need to define one vehicle factory interface. Okay. So to do that, we can define one vehicle factory like this vehicle factory interface. And this will be having some kind of function create vehicle okay and this will take that parameter number of wheels that how many wheels we need in our vehicle okay this will be of type integer and it will return one vehicle okay so this is our vehicle factory interface it is having the function to create vehicle and it will just take one parameter number of wheels and it will give us one vehicle okay so this is basically our factory class okay this factory class is just having one interface right one function one abstract function now we need to define the vehicle factory concrete class okay so we have our interface now we need to define one concrete class which will be having the implementation for this abstract function so we can define one class and we can write it concrete vehicle factory okay and it will implement the interface vehicle factory and we need to override this function create vehicle and we need to return one vehicle object based on number of wheels so we can just add one return statement we can add one when expression it will just take number of wheels okay and inside we will just check that if number of wheels are two, we will just return one bike object, which we have already created here based on this class, we will return one object here. If number of wheels are four, we will return one car class object. Basically bike and car both are of vehicle type and this vehicle factory method create vehicle is returning one vehicle type. That's how we are returning these two classes object bike and car because both are of same type vehicle okay and we can also add one else case and if there are any different number of wheels so we can just throw one exception illegal argument exception and we can add one message that these number of wheels are not supported okay and now we can just create different kind of object let's say we want to use inside the main function now inside our main function we need this vehicle factory because our client will be accessing this create vehicle function right so we are just going to create one vehicle factory object and this will be of type vehicle factory and the implementation part will be with the help of concrete vehicle factory class okay so we created one object for this interface and we assigned the implementation with this part concrete vehicle factory okay now let's say we want one bike object okay so what we need to do is we just need to do vehicle factory dot create vehicle we just need to pass number of wheels as two and it will give us one bike object if we want one car object so we can just use our vehicle factory dot create vehicle and we can specify number of wheels as four you must be getting this point right that how helpful and how scalable this is we have just one vehicle factory right we don't know how to create bike object or car object our vehicle factory interface is exposing one function create vehicle it is just giving us one vehicle okay so this bike and car both are simply created with the help of this parameter we just accessing this create vehicle function we are just passing number of wheels and we are getting these object let's say tomorrow in our factory we want to upgrade the production we want to build trucks also now right so the first step will be we'll just define one class truck this will also be of type vehicle okay we will just override this function drive we will just return truck is on the road okay this is our truck class here this is also one concrete product this is truck class and this is also concrete product 
why it's concrete product because it is implementing this drive function as well right this is kind of a vehicle which is truck now we can add inside our factory one update that if there are eight number of wheels are eight so we can just return one truck object okay and if someone want a truck object we can just create very easily with our vehicle factory dot create vehicle we just need to specify number of wheels as eight okay and then if we just print out all of those things let's say we just call bike dot drive we can just write with the help of other object as well car dot drive truck dot drive okay so we are getting all of these drive methods executed that bike is on the road car and truck because we are having three object and we are calling respective drive function so i'm sure that now you must be understanding this that how important and scalable the factory design pattern is if we want to create a factory which can create similar types of object but variations can differ a bit so in this example our factory is creating vehicles but vehicles can differ based on different different characteristics right so our factory can create all of those vehicles with the help of given characteristic right so any user can come and they can tell us that can you give me one object of this type like they can just tell us some characteristic in this case number of wheels and our factory will be responsible to give them that object user will not be having any idea how we are creating that object right so that part we can handle on our own with the help of factory design pattern user can just come to us user can demand some kind of object our factory will supply that object but user will not be uh, bother about the complex part where we are creating the object okay okay so this way we can implement factory design pattern every design pattern has some kind of advantage and disadvantage right now let's discuss of factory design pattern so the main advantage is 100% abstraction guarantee if you are defining a software with the help of factory design pattern you can define all the components in such a way that abstractions are there components are loosely coupled okay and this is very helpful when there are software architects and they are defining some kind of functionality for the software so they can define the abstract contracts right and later on the development team can come in they can pick some kind of functionality which architect defined and they can implement respectively right so this is very important and very useful in terms of software development and the code is scalable so if you want to add some new feature you can define some kind of new contracts then you can implement those and you can return the object or the software chunk whenever it's required right the only downside i feel is it's a little bit complex so if you want to implement a complete software using factory design pattern so you need to write some kind of abstraction then the respective implementation at some other place and you need to define load of interfaces and so on so it's little complex but once okay so that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed it please like it if you don't like the video please dislike it but at least interact with youtube algorithm right so feel free to drop your thoughts in the comment section i will see you in the next video till then take care be happy